Hello, and welcome to the Computing Conversations column. This column is from the February 2014 issue of IEEE Computer and is titled Joseph Harden, Developing NCSA Mosaic. There is supporting video material for this column that you can find in the IEEE Computer Society YouTube channel or in the IEEE Digital Library. I am the editor of the column, and I'm Charles Severance from the University of Michigan. Twenty years ago, the web and Internet were transformed from a medium used primarily by academics and researchers to one used by the general public. The Mosaic web browser helped kickstart this evolution by making it very simple for users to download and install a browser and experience the web through a simple and elegant interface on their Unix, Windows, or Macintosh computers. Although Mosaic wasn't the first browser, it was the first that had a primary goal of ease of installation across all major computing platforms. Mosaic came from a culture of building user-friendly networking tools at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications, NCSA, at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. In an earlier Conversations column, I spoke with Larry Smarr about NCSA's culture. In 2008, I met with Joseph Harden to talk about his role as the manager of NCSA's software development group in the early 1990s and the genesis, growth, and impact of the NCSA browser that became Mosaic. Although NCSA's official purpose was to deploy shared supercomputing resources over the NSF net, there was an intense interest back in the early 1990s in how to make use of network resources as simple as possible and to broaden the population of those involved in computing and networking. What I thought was interesting was how people were using these new technologies to work together. We've been working, um, we started out working with uh, tools that supported simulation and computations on the main supercomputing systems. Larry recognized from the beginning, and we all loved the idea, um, that these small little things on the desktop were really the gateways for everybody to the big machines in the background, and that all of this would turn into one cloud behind the, the, the screen that we needed to figure out how to get the user involved in as much as possible. As they built easy-to-use tools to give researchers access to central resources, it was a natural step to move into building tools to help those researchers share materials and work with each other. It's an easy extension from that to think about collaborative technologies in the large. How do people work together not only with these tools, but also with um, simple communications, um, email, papers, data sets that they want to share, and how do they do that? Initially, our interest was in synchronous tools um, when we were thinking of collaboration tools. So we were building something called NCSA Collage, which was a set of tools that worked, and one of the big deals was that they worked across the three platforms. Um, the X Windows for the Unix people, uh, the Windows environment, and the Mac. And that was one of the things that was sort of part of the underlying culture there was that we wanted to make them available to as large a community as possible. NCSA Collage's goal was to allow synchronous sharing of images, data, papers, and applications on 1990s hardware and networks. The team initially saw the browser as just another potential component in their collage system, something to allow shared synchronous viewing of web documents. So that's the context in which Dave Thompson who was one of the developers, one of the X-Windows developers, the lead X-Windows developer, I think, for the collage tool, um, pulled down one of the early um, web browsers. And I, it was the one from Slack, and I can't remember its name. Um, and he went through the effort of getting it working and brought it in and showed it to Mark Andreessen and I. And both of us looked at the screen Dave described what he had in front of us, um, and we said, we can do better than that. That's a complicated system, and the interface looks terrible. And it, Dave said that it was a real pain for, it to, for him to get it working, for him to download it and install it and compile it and everything. And it only works on the next Windows box. And wouldn't it be cool if it worked across all three of the boxes and if it was something that was just a plug-and-go like the rest of our tools. Mark and Eric Bina immediately started development of the X-Windows version of NCSA Mosaic. They decided to make the source code freely available from the beginning of the project. 
And this was before we really understood what was meant by open source. So we just, and, but we wanted everybody to be able to take the software and do whatever they wanted to with it. We weren't that concerned with commercial advantage. We were more interested in it being open and uh, people being able to make contributions back to the code and taking the code and doing what they wanted to with it. So we just put it all in the public domain, which, as the folks from Apache will tell you, uh, was kind of ambiguous. It's not clear what that means. Um, but at least it got the code out there. The first X-Windows version of Mosaic came out in early 1993, and the response was immediate. It was easy to download and install, and because a rapidly growing number of existing websites popped up seemingly overnight, it felt like the new world was bursting with content. The response, of course, was fantastic. It's wonderful to be able to just click on something and see it right away. And indeed, the combination of um, hyperlinks in a document as far as navigation and retrieval of documents as a user interface is just great. And a lot of people um, got it immediately, especially people that were working with um, the tools at NCSA and the companies. I remember an HP exec coming in one time and uh, Mark and Eric had written a little filter that took Unix um, uh, documentation and made it into HTML and made all of the references into links and they went to, they hit an HP site uh, and the exec said, where's this coming from? Because he was able to see all of his HP documentation there in the room at NCSA and navigate through it real easily. And he said, well, you've got three or four folks back there that have put up uh, HTTPD servers. You may not know what those are yet. And he said, I've never heard of this. And we said, but this is the kind of thing that um, is probably going to be really useful in the future for people who are trying to manage documentation in a distributed fashion. Yada, 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 right? We went on with the story like that. And this guy was bouncing up and down in his seat. And this was the kind of response that we got with it. Since Mosaic had come out of the early collage effort, the early versions maintained a connection to the collage software. For a while, we tried to integrate the earlier work with collage with the work with Mosaic. And early versions of Mosaic have a collaborate button at the top. And that was something that would allow you to pull in something from a synchronous session. Uh, the idea was that you'd be working with your colleagues synchronously and then asynchronously go off and use the browser and pull something into the, uh, the collage session or vice versa, be working on something in the collage session and be able to access it through the browser or just use the browser as a component in the, in the session. Once the X-Windows version of Mosaic was completed and released, the next step was to build the complementary Windows and Macintosh versions of Mosaic. The browser, of course, took off. We had uh, Tom Redman, who was the lead for Mac version, though the person who really built it was Alex Todit, who was a, a excellent developer and a lot of times ran ahead of the other people that were working on stuff, especially on the Mac. Um, and Chris Wilson and John, they were working on the Windows version. By early 1994, the general public was about to get on the web. So all of a sudden, in 93, late 93, early 94, there's this full suite of mosaics that work across the X Windows, the Mac, and the Windows system. And that's the point at which um, the guy who was the president at the time of the Internet... Um, association said NCSA has fired a shot heard around the world because it's available now across all these platforms and anybody can use it. Once the doors to the web were thrown open, the next question was how it would affect society. We were convinced deep down inside that all of the new technologies and the digitalization of the world and everything was going to make a huge difference. We just weren't sure exactly how. At the same time, when People would come to us early on in the Mosaic experience and say, we want to commercialize this uh, and do this with it or do that with it. There was a lot of, you know, we're not sure. By mid-1994, commercial efforts started ramping up. Mark Andreessen and others formed the Mosaic Communications Corporation, later renamed Netscape, to build a commercial web browser and server. Bill Gates quickly pivoted Microsoft development 
to add native TCP IP support in Windows, as well as bundle the Microsoft Internet Explorer web browser into Windows 95. It wasn't until um, the Netscape effort started up uh, that there was sufficient energy and sufficient resources, I think, to really get on and ride and push um, and, and, you know, crank up a group of X hundred developers uh, in a matter of months. And then they were, you know, quickly overshadowed by the effort that uh, Microsoft put into it. I remember one of the Netscape guys saying, um, I came back from a meeting with some folks up in Seattle, and they said that Microsoft now had, this is when Netscape was riding at the top of its form, right? Top of the game. This guy says, Microsoft just told me that there's this, somebody from Microsoft just said that they've got like 2,000 developers working on this. Said at that point I realized that we were, you know, going to have some difficulties. As Netscape and Microsoft battled for market control, those who created the web, Tim Berners-Lee and Robert Caillou, and those building open source browsers, became concerned that the success and popularity might lead to a situation where browsers, servers, and HTML itself became proprietary technologies. And we, of course, always felt there should be more than one browser. Um, and so we wanted to, see, because we were interested in standards and openness, right, at the time. If, one, if there's only one browser, then that company gets to determine what the standards are. And there were all kinds of hassles early on about um, putting in different features and the browsers driving the standards rather than the standards driving the browsers and all this kind of stuff. So we wanted some diversity. Berners-Lee and others formed the World Wide Web Consortium in October 1994 to guide and drive an open standards-based approach to the evolution of the web technologies. By the end of 1994, Microsoft was shipping the beta releases of Windows 95. There was a feeling very early on uh, that this was going to be a real gas. This was going to be hot. That this was something that was, the response was just so immediate. If you go back and you ask people um, who were sitting in front of machines in 1993, 94, 95, right? Uh, and you say, do you remember the first time that you used Mosaic, right? Or do you remember the first time you used a browser if it wasn't Mosaic? And the vast majority of them that, I, that I've run into say, yeah, I can remember. And I remember one of the NSF program officers calling me up one day, just out of the blue, and saying, I just wanted to tell you, you know, you guys, have probably, this was like after we'd been playing with this for months, right? Not, not years, just months. He said, you know, sometimes we just sit around and click on things because it's still such a surprise to have a picture or a whole other page of information pop up, right? And we don't know where it's coming from and we don't know who's putting it up, but we still haven't gotten over the gee whiz aspect of this yet. While the development of the web has had many critical moments, what happened in 1994, including the release of Mosaic on X Windows, Microsoft Windows, and Macintosh, was essential to bringing the Internet to the widest possible audience. This column is from the February 2014 issue of IEEE Computer and is titled, Joseph Harden, Developing NCSA Mosaic. There is supporting video material for this column that you can find in the IEEE Computer Society YouTube channel or in the IEEE Digital Library. I am the editor of the column, and I'm Charles Severance from the University of Michigan.